Hello, my name is Ben Garmizi. I'm a GU medical oncologist and an early and late base investigator with Sarah Cannon Research Institute. And here today I'm presenting results from a new TKI zanzalitinib made by Exelixis in combination with both nivolumab, a PD-1 inhibitor, as well as nivolumab and relatinib, a LAG3 LAG inhibitor. And the point of this is basically it's a dose escalation and expansion study to see the activity of a TKI-IO combination across solid tumors. We did have data presented also at this conference in an RCC cohort that was treatment naive. So when we go through this poster, let's remember that these are treatment refractory patients and contextualize the response rate and the safety with that in mind. And you can see here overall, let's start with the conclusions because that's what ASCO likes to do and that's where we are today. We find that this combination is tolerable, it's manageable, and it's consistent with what we would expect from an IOTKI. But there are some unique differences with this IOTKI combination compared to some of those that are already commercially available on the market. We're also going to show that it's safe it's, and has efficacy, and we're going to do some exploration between the differences between a triplet versus a duplet. So the background, what is zanzalitinib? Zanzalitinib is a VEGF TKI, but it's a multi-targeted multi TKI. It's not a VEGF selective TKI, kind of like cabozantinib, which it often gets compared to because they're both made by the same company. You can see here it has effect on the TAM kinase receptors, which we think might have some effect on the immune modulation, which is critical to these combinations and actually developing the hypothesis for the design of why we should combine VEGF tyrosine kinase inhibitors that are multi-tyrosine kinase inhibitors in combination with immune therapy. When we jump into the methods, right, this is basically a phase 1B. We are also involved in our site at the phase 1A in the escalation and looking at um, kind of bringing up the dose in the doublet, in, in the triplet with the LAG3 as well as the nivolumab and then also then looking at the toxicity. Let's focus on the results, though, because I always go to, to table one first. This is the demographics. Let's talk about the patients that were on in this study. Remember, phase 1B type patients. Renal cell carcinoma was overrepresented in the triplet combinations. These were not randomized amongst the cohorts. You can see about half of patients in the triplet were in, on uh, RCC, but we do have a representation of colorectal cancer, lung cancer, melanoma, as well as prostate patients as well, a decent amount of prostate patients on this study. And that is building upon what we saw with the cabozantinib and atizolizumab data that was presented earlier at a different conference, uh, knowing that there is some uh, efficacy with TKI-IO potentially in prostate, though that story is still emerging. Um, patient disposition, remember, we're talking about why do patients discontinue. Most of them did discontinue from progression, which is showing that this is an efficacious and tolerable combination, right? Um, we're also looking at mean dose intensity. It's kind of different between the arms. This is a way of looking at how much of that TKI of that zanzalitinib could we give? How much of the time did we need to dose reduce it? And I think this is a kind of the critical story that's emerging, at least in renal cell carcinoma, dose density and intensity can matter when we think about these patients and the efficacy. But now let's go to the most important part here, right? Let's look at response. These are the waterfall plots. And you can see across the three different cohorts, patients are responding, right? Zanz and Nevo, this is the doublet with PD-1. You can see uh, most having downward deflection in their disease growth. Remember, this is a phase one population. This is not a late phase or standard of care population. So we can expect this might look differently in a less pretreated population. You go to Zanz and Nevarella, and you can see here then the triplet, nice waterfall plot. And then here at the higher dose of Zanza, this is Zanza 60, this is Zanza 100. Again, very similar looking waterfall plot to the Zanza 60. And then when we look at the spider plot, this is talking about durability of the response. You can see here a nice downward deflection in some patients maintaining a durable disease control there. And in the Nevorella combos, you can see also those patients that do get a response seem to have somewhat durability of that response. Well, then why don't we see a major difference potentially in some of the response rates on the waterfall plot? The thing that we always have to think about is when we do a triplet versus a doublet, and this story has emerged in RCC for sure, is that you have to think about the high-dose corticosteroid use. When you have toxicities and with, with more, uh, immune therapy, more immune therapies, you can have a 40% rate of high-dose steroids in the uh, Zanza Nevo Rela and Zanza 100, which may impact some of those results. And, and that's when you add kind of what we saw with Cosmic 3 and 3 with Ipi, Nevo, Cabo, and increased high-dose steroid use, potentially blunting some of the effect on the overall response rate. But overall, you can see well-tolerated, manageable, and in the triple with Zanza 60, only a 21% high-dose steroid use, which is uh, good to see. So, um, and then all-cause treatment and related adverse events, how do we compare this to other TKIO combinations? You can see here, 
what really stands out compared to cabazantinib, which is the company that makes sanzalitinib, they also make cabazantinib, there's less PPE. The half-life's dramatically shorter, unlike cabazantinib, which has a half-life around 99 hours. This one's way quicker, which means you can turn on and off that toxicity and learn in a combination. Where's that toxicity coming from? Is it coming from the Zans? Is it coming from the immunotherapy? Of course, if you paired it with something else, is it coming from that something else, right? We can kind of learn those things. Otherwise, we see the same side effect profile, right? Besides less skin, we do still see the GI side effects we see with this class. We see the hypertension and the fatigue that we see with this class. And of course, uh, the grade three, four adverse events are slightly higher as we move into the triplet at 100. You see slightly higher side effects here than you do with a doublet, which is as we would expect. So what I'd say is the summary is there's no takeaway that there's a new safety signal. The safety is as expected with, with the three drugs that we're partnering here. And overall, it's a very exciting combination and worthy of further development.